Hey everyone, Daniel Burnett here with Imperfect Designs bringing you another spaced out tutorial. In my last tutorial I showed you how to make a text outline music equalizer effect and that kind of inspired me to stick with some of the uh, audio visualization effects within After Effects at least for this tutorial. Maybe the next one we'll see how that works out. But for now I'm going to show you how to create a spinning record audio visualization effect complete with needle and all looks a little something like this. I fell in love with a wind-up souvenir I bought it downtown as I was on my way to meet you She sounds like the songs you used to sing to put me to sleep But now that you're gone, she's all that I've left to hold And I feel so old Okay, so this tutorial is going to be quite long. Um, there are a lot of steps involved, but each step is going to teach you something about After Effects and the effects that come built in with it. It'll teach you some new techniques that you may not have known before, so it's worth the length, and at the very least, at the end of it all, you'll know how to make a record. So, let's start off by creating a new project. In here and I don't need to save that. The first thing you want to do is import your music. So file, import file, or control I. And I'm going to use the same song that I had in that example, which is a song by Fun called All Alone. And I'll just import that in. And then just drag this to a new comp, and that'll create a composition that's exactly the length of your music. Uh, if it's not um, a perfect square, you're going to want to change that in your composition settings. I think when you bring in music and it's just audio, it'll use the last uh, comp settings that you uh, had before. So if it's not a square, you're going to want to come into your composition, composition settings, and change it to a square. Um, in this case, I'm using a 400 by 400 width and height, but it can be any size, but this is going to be the record, so it needs to be a square. Okay, and hit OK. Alright, so now what we want to do is start off by making the uh, those green visualization lines, which is kind of similar to what we did in the text tutorial. Um, it's the same spectrum effect, but we're going to use a different option this time. So the first thing we want to do is create a new solid. New solid. Control Y or Command Y on a Mac, and we'll call this uh, Spectrum. Spectrum, and color doesn't matter. I'll just leave it black. And you're gonna want to um, before you add the audio spectrum effect, you're gonna want to make sure your Spectrum solid is selected, and double click on the rectangle tool, and that's gonna create a rectangular uh, mask around your solid. Now at first it's not going to really do much because it's just masking the entire comp, but we're going to be using that as a path for our audio spectrum. So come into your effects and presets and look for audio spectrum, there it is, and drag that onto your comp. And set the audio layer to your audio track. And now we're going to use the path option, which we didn't use in the last tutorial. And this is going to make a world of difference. So set path to max, uh, mask 1, and you'll notice it immediately goes around the edges of our comp, which is exactly what we want. But it's kind of spaced out, so we want to bring the frequency bands up, just crowd it out a little. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a little more. Okay. That should be good. Set the thickness up to maybe 8. And we just want to fill it in. That looks good. Um, and now what you want to do is you want to make sure that as it uh, goes up and down to the music that it goes all the way into the center of your image of your comp so let's find some spikes there I see us if you scrub through your timeline there you go I see spikes there or maybe a little farther uh, yeah that's good spikes there and um, 
bring the maximum uh, the maximum height option up until it goes yeah until it crowds most of your uh, comp. And of course, you can always change the audio duration and offset like we did in the last tutorial. Uh, quick refresher: larger audio duration will make it a smoother uh, motion of the bars. So I'll do that to 350 milliseconds, and then you should always set the audio offset to negative the duration, which in this case is negative 350, to keep it synchronized with your audio track. So that looks good. And now we're going to change the colors. You can leave it as pink if you want. I prefer mine to be green. So let's hit green. And in this case, let's go green and like that. There you go. And blend overlapping just helps fill it in a little more. And that looks all good. But it's kind of sharp. And as the record is spinning, it would blur it out. So we can't really add a motion blur here because it's not round yet and the motion itself is going to be in a different comp. So we're going to fake it by just applying a little bit of fast blur. So just right click here, go to blur and sharpen, hit fast blur, and we'll bring this up to like seven. Oop, too much. Uh, five. Six. Yeah, six is good. You just want it to blur together. Uh, that's nice. Okay. Um, the next thing we want to do is, in our example, you saw the middle of the um, of the record was pulsing to the beat. Now, there's an easy way to do that, but it won't be as good. Um, you can just use your audio track as the basis for the pulsing. But the thing is that you would... It looks better, at least to me, if it pulses only to the bass in your track. And there's no uh, option to set it to just do the bass. You have to manually do that, so we're going to do that now. I realize what I just said is a little confusing, but it'll all be clear as we go on. So first, click on your audio layer and press Control d or Command-D to duplicate it. Now you want to go to Composition or I'm sorry, layer, pre-compose, and we'll call this audio base, and move everything into the new composition. You double click here to go into here, and what we're going to do is in this composition, we're going to put a low pass on the audio, and that's going to make it so that only the lower sounds come through, so that we have our base separate from the rest of the audio. So we do that by right-clicking the effects and choosing Audio, High Low Pass, and choose a Low Pass. Um, the cutoff frequency should be fairly low. I'm just going to do about 500 hertz. should be good. Um, just a little fact in case it helps you later with your audio work. Humans can usually hear from about 200 hertz to 200,000 hertz. So, um, I'm sorry, to 20,000 hertz. So, in this case, we're cutting it off at 500 hertz, which is the low end of the spectrum. And, um, yeah. So this just isolates the bass. And that's all that's going to be in this comp. And we needed to pre-comp it so that we can right-click in the, um, once we're on the main comp here, we right-click the audio bass layer and choose keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. And give it a second, it'll... It'll say over here it's converting audio to keyframes. And once it's complete, what it's going to do is create a new layer right here called Audio Amplitude. And all this layer has on it, it's a null, is left, right, and both channels. And this is just the volume of each channel. That's the left speaker, the right speaker, and whatever's in the center. So if you press U to show your keyframes, you'll see at every single frame there is a keyframe with the volume of each channel. We don't need the left or right channel for now, so we can just click on those sliders and delete them. Oops, sorry, left channel, delete, right channel, delete, and leave both channels, which is center pan. And 
we need to find out what the maximum is uh, throughout the comp for this value. So an easy way to do that is click on the slider and click over here where it says graph editor. And what we see here is each keyframe plotted on a graph so we can see where the tallest ones are. And you put our, your mouse over it and you can see it says 77.6 units here. And you just check around on the high ones and see how high they go. 76.9. So yeah, it seems about 77.6 is the highest. We'll call it 78. So now what you do is... <coughs> <coughs> very sorry um, we need to create a new solid so control command Y and we'll call this pulse uh, make it the comp size and make it black it's actually important this time that you make it black hit OK and you want to bring the pulse down underneath the spectrum so that the spectrum shows through okay now uh, make sure you don't collapse this slider from the audio amplitude because you're going to need that. And with the pulse layer selected, I'm going to right click and generate a ramp. So, generate ramp. And this is going to be the part that actually pulses. So, bring the start of the ramp towards the center, or actually as close to the center as you can get it. And the end of the ramp should be with a Y of 400, so that it goes right to the edge of the comp. Or, you know, if your comp was 600 pixels by 600, then you'd want to make that 600. Just put that at the end of your comp. And change the colors here in the center to a kind of mid-gray, all dark gray. And then the end color to black. Just to get this kind of gray spotlight effect. Um, and now we're going to need to do an expression. And this expression is going to link our blend with original to our audio amplitude. Because you'll notice if we bring the blend with original all the way up to 100%, it just shows the black solid beneath. If we bring it down to zero, it shows the gray. Um, which actually, I think I am going to make that gray a little lighter. Just a little. Yeah. Alright, so blend with original. 100% is black, 0% is a nice spotlight gray effect. So we want to link that to the audio amplitude so that as the audio goes higher or louder, um, the blend goes up or goes closer to zero, so it brightens up. And as the audio is lower, it goes up closer to 100. And the way we do that is we hold Alt or Option on a Mac and click the stopwatch next to blend with original then that's going to create this expression here and you want to grab the pick whip here and bring it up to the slider from your audio amplitude layer and let it go and that's going to create this uh, it's just going to bring that value into your expression for you and uh, here's where you have to do a little bit of coding uh, for your expression you don't really have to understand it I'm going to explain it anyway because you can never have too much knowledge. But if you don't understand it, that's fine. Just copy and paste what I'm writing and it'll work fine. So we want to uh, store this audio amplitude value in a variable for use later. So we'll call that temp, just for short for temporary variable. Say temp equals and leave that whole uh, expression there. So temp equals this comp layer, audio amplitude, blah, blah, blah. Then at the end of all of this, you're going to put a semicolon, which ends the line, so that you can write a new line of code. And in this, and that was entered.